William Howard Taft was born on September 15, 1857. Taft was the son of a judge and he lived in Cincinnati for his childhood. After he finished his primary schooling, he attended college at Yale University. He excelled greatly at Yale and ended up going back to Cincinnati to study and eventually practice law. On June 18, 1886, Taft married Helen Heron, also known as Nellie. Together, they had three children, Robert, Helen, and Charles. President Taft was a significantly obese man. He even struggled in the bathtub of the White House and had to have a larger one put in to accommodate his larger size. Taft had a weight problem since childhood, possibly because of the high expectations that his parents put on him. His father was a distinguished Cincinnati attorney and prominent Republican who served as Secretary of War and Attorney General. When Taft was 34 years old, he was appointed Federal Circuit Judge. President McKinley sent Taft to the Philippines to help improve the economy and to build roads and schools. He helped the people of the Philippines gain a say in the government. Under President Roosevelt, Taft was named Secretary of War. Taft was so well liked that after serving as Secretary of War under Roosevelt, the Republican Convention appointed him as a presidential candidate for the 1908 election. Taft ran with Republican Vice President candidate James S. Sherman. His opponents were William Jennings Bryan, who was running for a third time for the Dem Democratic Party. Taft hated campaigning, but Roosevelt helped him to gain support. Taft had every intention of carrying on the progressive policies introduced by Theodore Roosevelt. During the campaign for presidency, Roosevelt made speeches and gave advice to Taft. Some say that Taft can stand for, for take advice from Theodore, because Roosevelt played an important role in Taft's presidential election. Another key player in Taft's election was his wife, Nellie. She urged Taft to announce that he intended to drop 30 pounds for the campaign ahead. The campaign against Democrat William Jennings Bryan and Socialist Eugene V. Debs, who was nominated for the third time, was one that Taft, a Republican, hated. He hated politics and especially hated campaigning. Taft refused to say anything negative about his opponents. Maybe our politicians today should take a lesson from our fattest president, Taft. Obviously, or maybe not so obviously, Taft won the election of 1908 and became the 27th president of the United States. <clears throat> While in office, he did not believe in stretching the presidential powers, unlike Theodore Roosevelt, who was the president before him. Following Roosevelt, he strived to lower tariffs and break up trusts, often called the trust buster. This is considering that 99 trust prosecutions occurred while he was president. Standard Oil Company of New Jersey and the American Tobacco Company were the two most famous antitrust cases. He won a lawsuit against the American Sugar Refining Committee company, sorry, I think I said committee, but it's supposed to be company, to break it up because he felt like they rigged prices. He was often criticized for these cases because people felt he couldn't distinguish between good and bad trusts. He wanted to expand foreign trade in South and Central America and Asia as he termed his policy dollar diplomacy. Oops. Because of his lack of ideological pa passion and narrow interpretation of presidential power, Taft lost support of progressives. Being the successor of Theodore Roosevelt, who was a forceful, expansive leader, Taft lacked popularity and a good reputation. He was seen as more conservative. Taft lost favor with Roosevelt, who regretted supporting Taft for the presidency. President Taft entered the White House determined to contribute to Roosevelt's programs. His main goal was to create a framework for, the, for reforms. His translation of executive power was focused on administration rather than legislative affairs. During his presidency, Congress passed many reforms that changed the country. 
Taft promoted an administrative innova innovation where the president, rather than the different agencies of government, would submit a budget to Congress, but Congress stopped this. However, the Budget and Accounting Act of 1921 gave Taft more of the control he was looking for in the executive branch to create a budget. One of these reforms was the Children's Bureau. The Children's Bureau was formed in 1912 when Taft signed a bill creating the federal organization. The purpose of the Bureau was to aid with the welfare of children and the life of children in all social classes. This made the United States the first country in the world to have a federal agency only focused on children. In addition to social reforms, Taft made sure to focus on national concerns. In 1912, Taft vetoed the statehood of Arizona and New Mexico. The two western states were denied of their statehood because Taft did not agree with their prearrangement for the recall of judges. Once both states removed the recall clauses, he accepted their statehood. New Mexico became a state on January 6, 1912, and Arizona on February 14. During his presidency, Taft passed two amendments. The First Amendment was the 16th Amendment, which, ratif which was ratified in March of 1913, allowing Congress to impose a federal income tax. Taft happily signed this amendment. On the other hand, Taft had a little bit of trouble signing the 17th Amendment because he did not fully agree with it. The amendment was ratified in May of 1913 and stated that senators would be elected by state legislators. In addition to his two amendments, one of Taft's most important legacies was the last minute bill. In March 1913, Taft signed a bill that divided the Department of Commerce and Labor into two. This created the Department of Labor. Taft signed the bill on his last day in office. He had mixed feelings about it, and many thought he was going to use a pocket veto. Taft ended up signing the bill last minute, which thus gave birth to de the Department of Labor. Taft's domestic policies policy was supplemented by a lesser but still significant focus on foreign affairs. William Howard Taft's foreign policy centered on securing economic power in other countries. Like his predecessor Roosevelt, Taft wanted to increase the United States' global influence, but he didn't believe in Roosevelt's use of executive action without congressional approval. This led to unaggressive, meek, and consequently unsuccessful attempts at securing the United States as a global economic power. For more on Taft's foreign policy, Please watch our next video.